Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everybody. Thanks for coming in. If you're a current subscriber, thanks for joining. You're gonna like today's video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a taste of what we are all about. So today's video, we're gonna review the seven main failure points of the N54 engine that's found in my 335i. You can also find it in the 135 and 535 BMWs. We're gonna review those top seven symptoms and cost to repair those particular issues. You're really gonna to wanna to stick around. Let's talk about it now. So tucked under this hood is the three liter inline six cylinder engine produced by BMW, has two turbos a strap to it. It's called the N54 and it came out about 2007 and ran a bunch of years thereafter. Now you'll find this engine in the 135, 335 and 535. The 335 which we have happen to have here. Now there's lots of common problems with all those models. Now you really have to understand what those are. There's seven of them. What are the symptoms and how much they're going to cost you to fix if you take it to the dealer? So I would say the vast majority of N54 engines have these following problems. And I would say the majority of the cars will suffer any one or most or if not all of these problems by 120,000 miles or 200,000 kilometers. So the first problem that you can see with these cars has to do with the cooling system. Cooling system is very important to keep your engine running optimally. Now with that you have lots of hoses, you have your rad caps, your radiator overflow, you have a lot of different hoses and components, your radiator that goes under there, they all run coolant and help keep the car cool. Now underneath Below the car here, there's a water pump and a thermostat bolted together. Very common failure point. And when you change the water pump, because it will fail, it's not if, it's when that water pump fails, you have to change the thermostat. Now, common symptoms, really, of those, you'll get the overheating light on the dashboard, you'll get limp mode, which is inevitable, and you'll totally lose power. You're lucky if you'll be able to even drive the car home. As a matter of fact, I would recommend, if you see the car starting to overheat, you pull over and shut the car off right away. Now this problem is very difficult to change because it's tucked away underneath so many parts. And because of that, it's going to cost you a lot of labor. I would say in the tune of about eight to 10 hours of labor to change the thermostat and the water pump. Now the parts themselves are quite costly. And if you buy them from the dealer, you're expecting about a thousand dollars Canadian dollars or about six, seven hundred dollars US plus labor. All in that price, about two thousand dollars Canadian. So another really, really costly failure on these cars are the waste gates and or turbos. Now the turbos can go if you have lots of smoke coming out of the exhaust that isn't related to the engine. It could be turbo seals leaking oil into the turbo and turbos are hot so it burns blue and out the smoke goes out the exhaust. So that could be a turbo seal issue if you have exhaust smoke. If you have strange noises like a rattling noise when you start the car, turn the car off, accelerate, change the throttle position and you're on and off the throttle, sometimes that's an indication of wastegate rattle. Now wastegate rattle is caused by wear and tear on the bushings. What the wastegate does is it creates an avenue where you can exhaust excess boost pressure outside of the engine to protect the engine and the turbo. If you run as much boost as the turbos can provide, you can blow up the engine and blow up the turbo. There's a preset value that the computer tells the actuator, which in turn tells the wastegate what to do and open when you have hit that set point. Well, when you hit that set point, out goes the boost. But that wastegate assembly is constantly moving, exhausting that excess boost. In here, you have the wastegates and the turbos both down on this side. There's two of them. There's one in the front, one in the back. There's two separate manifolds. There's three cylinders, three cylinders, each one going into its own turbo and has its own associated wastegate, which then is plumbed up to here. And there's a quick and easy check, check to see which wastegate is rattling, but that's really what is a common failure. Now the wastegate rattle really is a result of too much wear in the bushings because the wastegates are on a pivot point and as they wear the one edge of the wastegate actually tends to wear the bushing and then it gets slop and sometimes it actually binds and so the wastegate no longer moves smoothly it actually starts to rattle the other way and it gets all kinds of mechanical movement that shouldn't be there or wasn't designed to be in there in the first place. Now, this is a very costly repair. When you have a turbo problem slash wastegate, you might as well do them both. You can expect about a 15 hour labor bill on that, as well as you can expect about 1500 to up to as much as four grand just for a set of turbos and wastegates all in, depending on what level of boost and modifications you wanna go. And on top of that, you throw that labor. This is about a four to $6,000 bill to get that sorted out for you. 
So the next problem is valve cover gaskets and general leaks. Engine leaks in general are a common known issue with some of the BMWs and they're high, hard to diagnose sometimes when the engine is as cramped as this is. But valve cover leaks are very common. That is the main thing. Why? Because the valve cover is made of plastic in these BMWs, which really makes no sense. They do tend to warp, and when they do, they will leak. The gasket's cheap, but the valve cover isn't, and it takes some labor to change it. Then you basically gotta get in here, take this cover, these shrouds, all these covers and whatnot. Then you got access to the valve cover. Then with the labor and the parts, you take it to a shop, they're gonna charge you in and out probably $1,000 at the shop. So another well-known issue with these BMWs and another fairly costly one is the high pressure fuel pump. So you'll notice that way down in here, down, tucked down there, you can see it, that nice little gold colored device, way down there. As you can see, not very easy device to get at. There's lots of equipment that has to be moved out of the way, so you can expect a high labor bill for that. So all in, parts and labor for a high pressure fuel pump is in that range of about 1500 bucks. Now, how do you know when the fuel pump is going? Well, the fuel pump really is what delivers the fuel to your engine. And without fuel, what do you think your engine's gonna do? It's gonna be hard to start. It's going to idle rough possibly. It may not start at all or it might stall completely. You're gonna have running issues. You might have misfiring. There's lots of host of issues that can be a result of a bad running fuel pump. And remember, it's a high pressure fuel pump, so there's extra strain and heat on the fuel pump itself. And you would expect the lifespan to be a little shorter on these. Now there's a fortunate thing. If you have a car that has under 120,000 miles and is newer than 10 years, BMW accepted that this was a problem and, it, and extended the warranties for owners falling under that criteria and did that free of charge under an extended warranty. Free, no cost to you. If it went outside that warranty period or you had too many Ks, then unfortunately you were stuck with that $1,500 tab. Now another problem is boost leak. And boost leak can come in a lot of different ways. It can happen at intercooler points. It can happen at the turbo points. It can happen even at the charge pipe here, which is the most common point. Right here, we have an aftermarket aluminum charge pipe with a integrated blow off valve right on there. Now, with that, the original one is corrugated and it was weak and it was plastic and it had a tendency to blow apart. And so how would you know what was going on there? Well, obviously you would lose boost and a dramatic loss in horsepower. You would feel it right away. The boost is blowing right outside under the engine compartment and no longer directed directly into the engine, reducing your power output. Well, this fortunately wasn't a huge expense. You did have to remove the air box you had to remove some of this plumbing and then you could gain access to it. And that was only about $400 if you had some sort of a dealer or shop do it for you. Now on to another problem you would find typical of these engines is carbon buildup. Carbon buildup is usually a result of excess carbon. Obviously gasoline has carbon content within. So because of the direct injected nature of the engine, there has a high propensity to actually leave carbon behind. So often you get lots of carbon in the intake, carbon behind the valves, carbon throughout the system, and that of course chokes it down. Reduced power, problems. You'll notice a reduced reduction in power and general running isn't quite the same as it maybe once was. Not a big deal, you can get a walnut blast for about five, six hundred dollars and you can also do it yourself. There's kits, do it yourself kits for three, four hundred dollars, you can do it yourself. Not a big expense but something that should be done from time to time as a standard maintenance protocol. Yes, so guess what? We have another issue, and that happens to be fuel injectors. Because these are high pressure fuel injecting system, the injectors also have issues with either leaking down or not injecting at all. Lots of problems with the injectors, which again are buried underneath here. This cover has to come off, then you gain access to the injectors. Now, while you're changing the injectors, you often might as well change the coils and the plugs while you're at it and do a proper maintenance on it. But if you have bad fuel injectors, what are some common symptoms? Well, again, poor starting, stalling, possibly misfiring. You're going to have misfires on different cylinders. You can have a whole host of running issues, maybe a reduction in power. Sometimes if it's leaking down heavily, you can have extra soot, gasoline oil on your spark plugs. If you pull them out and do an examination, you'll find problems in there. And of course, generally at the worst case scenario, you may even see smoke out of the exhaust, excessive amounts of gasoline smoke because it's running very rich because it's washing the cylinder of gas. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it helps guide you in your choices when selecting a BMW or your next used BMW. 
After all, yes, there are some problems with these cars, but that's easily offset by the fun factor of the driving experience of the 335s, 135s, and 535 cars. They are exceptionally great. If you like the video, make sure you tap on that link down there in the end screen. That's gonna take you to my series of reliability videos. You're gonna love it. I really hope to catch you guys on the next one. See you then, bye-bye. To Exotic Car Play Place, everybody, thanks for... Welcome back to, welcome back.